Welcome. Today we have an art journal tutorial. We are going to feature Pantone's color of 2022 and this is another one in the series of using those gel prints or collage papers. So the Pantone color of 2022 is very peri. A periwinkle blue violet color and that is the inspiration for this page. So I went through my gel print stash and I picked out ones that go with the very Perry theme. They're not necessarily exact. I've picked out gel prints that look similar, that are gonna work with that color. So this is my technique of rip a strip with gel prints and you don't need full size pages you could have little bits here I like to use gel prints that are on different papers so we have some on coffee filters which I absolutely love using and give a very different feel to the page different weights different patterns so this is going to direct the color choice it's going to give you some ideas for patterning and it's one of my favorite ways of breaking the blank page this is some mulberry paper that i have in my stash so we're ripping it up now typically i like to have three of the same papers on a page. Now that's not a hard and fast rule. I like the raw ripped edges more than straight edges. So you'll see me ripping off any of those straight edges, but really it's up to you. And I'm layering these. So this, you've got the color scheme that it's giving you. You've got patterns that it's gonna hint at that you could use later on and you are layering them up so once we put more layers on this even if we don't see everything because we've added more layers it's going to add texture later on and that's going to give your piece more interest i'm working on my 9 by 12 cancer mixed media page that page has not been gessoed And then once I have a rough idea of where I'm going to put them, I'm gluing everything down with my fluid matte medium. I like the mulberry paper there that I've used. It's adding that dark contrast. We've got some lighter paper, some whiter, and there's similarity amongst the papers. There's something that works together with them. So there will be a playlist using your gel prints that you can go and see all the videos where I'm showing how to use those gel prints. Because if you're like me, we have a lot of them, either full size sheets or smaller sheets. And we really need to focus on using them in different ways. So go and check out that playlist. There really is no right or wrong way. I'm auditioning it in different places and then, do I like it? If I like it, I glue it down. Remember, this is the first layer. It isn't the only layer. We are going to add paint, we are going to add stenciling, stamping, rip and strip for me is the, uh, the one of my favorite ways, again, of breaking that blank page. If you don't know where to start, pick some gel prints that you like the colors of, glue them down, and that is your jumping off point. So the bits here, don't throw anything out. These little bits, they go into the stash and they can be used on it for another rip and strip or other technique where you were using the gel prints. Once this is dry, I'm looking at the patterning that's there. I've got the honeycomb pattern 
and I've got some checks. So I could use this, this stamp, this one, this stencil, and I'm just going through mine. I, it doesn't require you to have the exact stencil or stamp that's used there. It's just hinting at it. It's giving you a direction. So whether you choose to go in that direction is up to you. So this is the Chicken Wire Reverse stencil, and it is on that one coffee filter, and I'm liking it, and I want to repeat that in here, and I want to add texture. So I'm grabbing TCW modeling paste, and I'm putting it onto the key card, and then I'm going to apply the modeling paste on the blank page on top of these collage papers in three places. I'm not too worried about getting perfect stenciling here because this is just another layer of interest. Now I'm applying gesso, white gesso, and I'm rubbing it on the edges of some of the gel prints, some I'm going on top of. And this is where the magic starts to happen. That of application of gesso seems to meld all of your components together. Now here, all of these are very much in the same color family. If you were using two different colors, complementary colors across the from the color wheel. This is the stage applying the gesso that's going to just make everything work together. This is getting rid of some of those hard edges. It's softening it. It's going to allow for the paint to take in a different way. It's really hard to do this stage but it really is the beginning of the magic happening. You can see I'm going on top of some of those gel prints. and then I'm giving that a quick dry. Now I'm going to mix turquoise and dioxazine purple, and that makes, I'm with white gesso, and that makes a close approximation to the very peri, that color. And I just printed this off online because that's the color I want to go with. Now. Everything that's that I put on there with those gel plate gel prints isn't the exact match and they don't have to be. They're close, although it looks very different right now. But I want a hint of that color. That doesn't mean that the entire thing has to be just that color, one tone of it. Now I'm gonna admit, I this is the second attempt to use the Pantone color of the year. You may have seen that video before. It just didn't quite work. So I did learn a few things, so that was good. Now I liked how that navy worked on there and I wanted to introduce navy. So I'm using my Prussian blue and that chicken wire reverse stencil. So I have it in modeling paste, I saw in some of the collage papers, and I'm also stenciling. So it's white, it's dark, it's dark. And I really like that using that, using the same stencil with two different colors. It just seems to really work well. Now I am just having fun. I I love the colors that I'm using. That got a little messy, so I wiped it back down and I'm going to reapply it a little more carefully.
This is Punch Card. It is a slimline stencil from TCW. And one of my favorite general stencils, it's so usable. And I'm using it because it goes with that plaid that I had in that gel print. Now you can see those gel prints have been pushed further and further back. But they gave me this color story, they gave texture, they gave me pattern. Now I'm going to continue to stencil and I grabbed this Sunflower Row sign stencil, rustic sign stencil from the Crafters Workshop and I'm going to use this sunflower, a couple of the sunflowers. I'm here, I'm stenciling with white and I'm just getting it all, just interdispersing this. I'm getting a little too symmetrical. I, I tend to do that, but I'm just really making a lovely layered background. And I'm loving how that sunflower stencil just brought such light to this page. I'm grabbing a, the Prussian blue, and now I'm stenciling another one of the sunflowers. They're all different, slightly, and I'm stenciling with that. And I'm overlapping some of the, on top of some of the white, and I'm going over some of the punch card stenciling. That gives that layered look. Now I have no idea what focal image I'm going to use for this. I have, you know, there is no, end plan but as I keep adding layers and you can see all the wonderful layers in this background we've got physical texture from the modeling paste and the layering of the collage papers at the beginning we've got visual texture from the layering of the stencils and the different colors so the, it is very definitely reading in that very peri tone. This is the lilac stencil. And again, I'm just using it because I like the pattern there. I like the scope, the size of it. And I'm using bright aqua. I'm adding a little bit of contrast. And I chose bright aqua because it's a very opaque paint, meaning it blocks out what's behind it. And I just needed a little bit of variation. And I, uh, I so totally love, love, love this background with the addition of this. So you can see those collage papers that we started with, the rip and strip, some of that's peeking through, not a lot, but it got us going. It gave us the next step. And that's one of the great uses for our gel prints and collage papers. I wanted a small pattern, so I grabbed this Elegant Script stencil from Darkroom Door. And this, as well as many TCW stencils and products and other mixed media and art journal products can be purchased at Ninny's Napkins. There is a coupon code in the description box. I'm just adding, so we've got some bigger patterns, some smaller patterns. Now I want to break up this background because it's very busy, as lovely as it is. And I grab a cup, few lids. I keep lids from different things, different sizes. And I'm going to add these circles and I'm tracing around it with my ink tense pencil. This is an indigo blue. And I chose blue because there's blue in the background. And I'm breaking up that background and I'm going to, with this, make a backdrop for my focal image. 
I also want the eye to start at the left and move to the right, and that does that. I'm going to use one of the Julie Nutting dolls as the main part of the focal image, but you can see how those circles are going to be the backdrop. Now, Inktense blocks are ink, and once they're activated with water, they become permanent once they're dry and they're fully activated. So here I am using my angle brush, adding water, and activating that. So I, because I want these circles to pop out. I'm not using the negative painting technique here where I'm painting out the background, but it's similar. You can use a flat brush for this. I prefer the angle brush. I just find I have better control with angle brushes. And I go back a couple times and make sure that this is all activated because I know I'm going to be gluing stuff down and I don't want this to activate when I'm gluing stuff down and discolor future layers. The nice thing about those, that Inktense pencil, you can buy the pencils separately at art stores. So you could just buy one. So I would buy a black or a in, dark blue indigo or a brown and use it because it's permanent. So now I'm figuring out where I want that Julie Nutting doll to go. I grab my Tim Holtz stamp platform. There are other stamp platforms. And if you struggle with stamping like I do, you may want a stamp platform. It allows you to get a good imprint. And whenever I am going through the effort of stamping, taking up my stamp platform, I'm going to stamp more things than I need because those then go into my stash at the ready for the next project. So I'm going to stamp three of these girls. And you just reapply it, press down. Now I'm using this dragonfly. I decided to add this motif to my focal image. I'm building up the focal image between the circles, the Julie Nutting doll, and this dragonfly. I'm stamping with archival paint, and I put a mouse pad underneath to get a better stamp. Thank you to some of my subscribers for giving me that hint. And then I'm just adding, re-inking my stamp pad. It's getting a little dry, so I want it to be fresh for the next time. Now I'm going to cut these out, and because my background is very busy, I'm adding a, just a little bit of white on there. I'm not, cut, I'm not cutting it exactly, so I kind of, I call this bubble cut. I don't know if that's the terminology but I'm going to cut out more than I need. And then I'm going to place them around that circle. So you can see between the dragonfly, the Julie Nutting doll, and the circles, that is the focal image. And it breaks up the background. Now I'm going through my sentiment packs and right off the bat, I have my grateful, thankful, blessed, and I see the first one and I, I'm thinking that's the one I'm going, to, going with. Flipping through a little bit more. This is the binder that I have all of mine. I've printed them out and then I know where to go. It's, make, it's an e easy way of finding your sentiments and organizing what you have. So I'm finalizing the placement of the dragonflies, again, they're giving movement through the page. Now, remember that ink tense block. Sometimes it's not fully activated, so I'm being a little careful here and I'm putting the matte medium on the back of it and being careful when I go over top of it because I don't want to get that blue on there in case some of it's not activated. So if you've used this to be a all pencil that's totally reactive, it's going to reactivate, you want to be careful. It's not that we shouldn't use these things. It's just that you need to be mindful of when you have 
and what could happen so you don't end up wrecking your page. Now I'm gluing the Julie Nutting doll down before I colorize it because if I do discolor it, I know I'm going to put a colored layer of paint on it. I'm going to be using acrylic paint to colorize her. You can color her however, which way you choose. The sentiment I chose was find joy in the ordinary and I found so much joy creating this art journal page. It really, I was definitely in my happy place. Now you might think that we are done, but there are a lot of finishing techniques coming up where I'm just going to take this and make it pop. But before we get to finishing, I'm going to colorize the girl. Now I've got a flesh tone that's already pre-mixed. That's a great time to use craft paints, but you can mix colors. I'm using yellow oxide for the hair and I'm mixing it with a little bit of white gesso. And that chain gives you subtle differences in tone. I know I'm gonna come back in the finishing process, do some shading and highlighting as well. But I don't want any of the colors to look flat. And I chose yellow because that it's a nice contrast with the background. Red would also have really popped on this page. Brown, I think, would be a little bit too, it wouldn't stand out as much. I'm debating what color to use for the dress, but I decide I'm going to make it that periwinkle color. So I mixed two colors, a purple and a blue. And these actually are were metallic paints from Artist Loft because I thought, oh, I'm going to give her a little bit of bling. You really can't tell that it's metallic on camera, but in real life you can. And I just mixed the two colors that I had and it still gave me a very nice periwinkle color. Now it doesn't really stand out until I start shading. I'm using my floating acrylic shading technique and I'm using Prussian blue here and this and the rest of the shading that I do really makes this girl pop and stand out from the background because you want the focal image to be front adding a little bit of the yellow oxide on there and it shows up because I've added the white gesso in that base coat. Now I'm going to add a few more highlights and lowlights with shading with brown on the skin tone as well as in the hair. Add some, look at it, add more if you think it needs more. My black Posca pen, I'm outlining the sentiment. And I put the two words, find joy, even though they're not connected together, because I want that to have weight and balance off the word ordinary in the bottom. I'm using the Posca pen to sketch around the Julie Nutting doll, just to make her stand out a little bit more. but I'm not giving it solid lines. It's not a look I like being having everything outlined perfectly. When I decide to outline these circles on the dragonfly, I'm not sure that added a whole lot, but you know what? You can always tweak what's there. And 
you know what? Try new things. Now I'm edging the page, but I'm not edging with a darker color. I'm edging with white. I want to keep this page light. I don't want it to go too terribly dark, which is why I'm not using black here. And I like that soft, ethereal look. Seems to be something I'm doing a lot of lately. But again, don't be don't be scared to try something new. I could have done that with blue as well. Now I'm using that floating acrylic technique and I'm shading with the white acrylic paint on the inside of these circles. And you're going to hopefully see what a difference this makes. It really makes these circles stand out even more than they did. You've got the dark from the ink tense pencil and now you have the light and you can see the difference between what's been done and what hasn't been done. So even though the background of the behind the circles are the same background as what's behind it, it looks somewhat different because of how we've set it up. And you can do the same thing with other shapes. And this is how you can take smaller images, stamps, and bulk up your focal image by combining them and setting them on a backdrop. Now I wanted these dragonflies to stand out a little bit more. So I am using Prussian blue and I am shading around them. Just giving it a little bit of shadow around them. And this, it really made them stand out more. So hopefully again, you can see from the ones I've done to the ones I haven't done, the difference. It's these little things that really make a page go from great to wow. And I think this page is a wow page. I was so incredibly happy with how this all came together. It's got everything, texture, pattern, color, balance, movement. Thanks so much for watching. Leave me a comment, subscribe to my channel, click the bell, to be notified of upcoming videos, give this a try. And if you do, post it in social media and be sure to tag me. Until next time, go get creative.